Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon lesson. Thank you for allowing me to join you as we spend this time in God's Word. If you're by yourself, with your family, or maybe with some friends, or maybe you're small group from church, thank you all for being here and participating this way. And I hope that maybe this can lead to some discussion where you can grow in your relationship with each other and grow in understanding who God is and how God works in our lives. We're going to be in the Old Testament book of Zechariah. It is one of those minor prophets as the latter part of the Old Testament. But as you're turning there, I want to tell you a story. When my brothers and I were younger, one of the things that we enjoyed doing was climbing trees. If there was a tree that looked like it could be climbed, we would try to climb it. It was one of those occasions when we had had Bible class and then worship assembly, and then I think we were having a fellowship meal and then on the ground. And my younger brother decided to take that time while the ladies were getting things together to climb a tree. It was a magnolia tree, if I recall correctly. And so he shimmies up the tree, a, you know, a decent way, not too far, but far enough. One of the ladies sees him in the tree as she's getting stuff out of her car. And she goes in and she tells my mom, Anna, your son, Charles, he's up in a tree. So my mom goes outside and she looks up and she says, Charles, if you ruin that new suit, you're in trouble. Clothes were important. Their parents did not make a lot of money. So a new suit was, well, it was an investment for them. And I can understand that. When we were growing up, if we were going to the store, if you go to the store today, whether it's Target or Walmart or the dollar store, wherever you might go, maybe the grocery store, you're going to see people that, that are, well, look like they just kind of rolled out of bed. If we were sitting on the couch and we were watching something, mom said, I need somebody to go to the store with me. And you volunteered, you, first you washed up, you washed your face, you brushed your teeth and you put on good clothes, not church clothes, but you put on good clothes to go to the store. Even you were just running to get one item, you dressed up to go to the store. I bring that up because of what Zechariah sees in this vision in Zechariah chapter three. Let's read all 10 verses of this chapter. Zechariah three, beginning in verse one. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand delivered from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed in filthy garments and standing before the angel. And he said, and he spoke to those who were standing before him, saying, remove the filthy garments from him. Again, he said to him, see, I have made your iniquity pass away from you and I will clothe you with festal robes. Then he said, let, a, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments while the angel of the Lord was standing by. And the angel of the Lord testified to Joshua saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep the responsibility given by me, then you will also render justice in my house and also keep my courts and I will grant you access to walk among these who are standing here. Now listen, Joshua, the high priest, you and your friends who are sitting in front of you. Indeed, they are men who are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am going to bring in my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have put before Joshua on one stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave an inscription on it, declares the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. And that day, declares the Lord, Yahweh of hosts. Every one of you will call for his neighbor to sit under his vine and under his fig tree. This is an interesting view, an interesting picture. Here we have Satan, the accuser, standing beside Joshua, the high priest. Joshua's in dirty clothes. And they're standing before the Lord, the angel of the Lord, the accuser. In verse 1, he is called the accuser, standing ready to accuse him. In verse 4, God commands that 
Joshua the high priest and be put into clean clothes and given a new turban. And when that happens, he says, see, your sins have been taken away. Your dirty clothes, your dirty life has been taken away. And now you are cleansed. You are clean. And then he's given a commission in verse 10. Time's going to come when you have a, a message from me and everyone's going to sit under the tree, under their vine and have talks with their neighbors. And the message is going to be about my branch, my servant, the savior, the Messiah. Now, as I look at this, there are a couple of things that jumped in my mind as I, as I read through this a couple of three times. First of all, as, as I look at Joshua, the high priest, I'm reminded the name Joshua is the Hebrew equivalent of the name Jesus. It means one who saves or the savior. And so my mind, as I read that, thought about Christ as our high priest. And as I was thinking about that, I, I reflect on the fact that, that Satan stood to accuse Jesus. He accused him and, and tried to trap him with temptations and, and then had him put to death alongside those who were, or who were robbers, who were thieves. He tried to accuse him in that trial and the trial led to Jesus' death. But Jesus remained clean and God rose him, raised him, rose him, raised him from the dead. And then he was commissioned. His commission from the time he was here and continued is to bring people to the Father. I'm not saying that this is necessarily messianic in that Joshua is Jesus, but I see similarities. It's messianic, messianic in the fact that he says to Joshua, the high priest, my branch, I'm going to send my branch. And that branch, most of the time capitalized in your Bibles, is a reference to the Messiah, is a reference to Christ. So it is in that way, but I just saw the similarities. And then as I continue to look at it, I, I remembered something. I remember what Peter records in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. And we are coming to him as a living stone, which has, an, and coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God. You, Christians, you also as living stones are being built up into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We are, as Christians, priests in the kingdom of God. Sometimes we hear the phrase, the priesthood of all believers, and there is truth in that phrase. That in a sense, as Christians, we are priests. We are a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood, serving in God's kingdom. And as priests, like Joshua, there is one who tries to accuse us. He accuses us of, of being guilty of sin. He accuses us of being unworthy of God. How, how can you be a child of God? Look at who you are. Look at what you've done. Look at your past. You're a horrible person. You are unworthy of God. And he would say to God, he's unworthy of you. And then he says, you're useless. You are useless to do good. Because if you do good, you're just faking it. Because that's not really who you are. You're unworthy, you're useless. That's what the accuser who is standing on our right side is saying to God about us and saying to us about ourselves. That voice inside your head that, that says, you're no good. As one song says, that's fear and fear is a liar. But that's what the accuser is doing. But we can take off those filthy garments and we can put on clean garments, clean clothes, white robes. Look at what John records in Revelation 7, verse 13. Then one of the answers, one of the elders answers saying to me, these clothed in white robes, who are they and where have they come? From where have they come? And I said to him, my Lord, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Whatever that entails in its entirety, it is talking at least about those of us who are Christians 
who have come out of the tribulation of sin, come out dirty, filthy, because we've been fighting and, and, and we're stained. But the blood of Jesus Christ washes our robes white. We are given a clean garment. We put on a new man, a new person. We put away those filthy rags. and We come to God clean, cleansed. Because in God's eyes, we're not unworthy, but we are worthy of his grace. First Peter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and unfading, having been kept in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You are worthy of God's mercy and grace. You are worthy enough for him to send his son into the world to die for you because God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that so that you through him might be saved. John 3, 16 and 17. Peter says, you're worthy of God's grace. And as God's children, we're not useless. We're useful to God. Listen to what Paul says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us that denying ungodliness and worldly desires, we should live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope in the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all lawlessness and purify himself, a people for his own possession, zealous for, don't miss those words, good works. God says, you are worthy of me and you are useful to me when you are mine. Don't listen to the accuser. He's saying, your hands are dirty, your clothes are dirty. You don't have the right headgear. You are unworthy. You are useless. And God says, here's the blood of Christ. Let me cleanse you. Let me put clean clothes on you because you are worthy and you are useful to me. And he gave us something to do. Paul tells the young man, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, teach to others who will be able to teach others. And trust these to others who will be able to teach others. So what we learn from those who are around us, we pass on to others who pass on to others. We teach, we learn, we teach, we learn, we teach, we learn, we teach. We teach what we know about God. We teach what we learned about God. Tell others about that cleansing blood of Christ. Here's what I want us to know. Here's what I want you to know. You, you, the one watching right now, wherever you are, you are worthy. You are of value to God. Don't let the accuser make you feel unworthy and useless because God says otherwise. He says, let me cleanse you with the blood of my son because I care for you. And then be useful in the kingdom of God. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your love and for your care. Brother, we know that the devil, Satan, the accuser, will try his best and tries his best to make us feel dirty, useless, unworthy. But Father, as we see your treatment of Joshua the high priest and giving him clean clothes, and commissioning him to do your will. Father, we know that you have, through Christ, done the same for us. You have told us you are worthy of my best, and you have given us that best, and simply call us to be useful in your kingdom. Thank you for considering me worthy. 
Thank you for considering all of us worthy of your grace. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to join you. If you have questions about the things that we study, please feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to talk with you about God and his grace and your worthiness in his kingdom. Again, thank you for joining me. I do look forward to the times we spend together. And as always, my prayer will be that God will bless your day.